Hello, aloha, ladies. Aloha. It is Wednesday, and we are um, once again. Um, it, so it's week twenty. Let me just say that it's week twenty of the Awaken Your Inner Fire Sacred Feminine Fire program with Nyasa Institute, and um, and we got stuck in Kansas, as you know, for three days. Our vehicle broke down, and then um, it didn't quite work out for us to um, have the call that we planned last night so um, it would have been really rushed I think we checked into our hotel at like 750 yeah, oh, yeah 750 everything is, it's just Central really Standard really Time. tight and um, but we did spend a couple hours in the car preparing and we we're very excited about this week's call I am very excited to introduce our, officially introduce our luminary, um, Nova, our special guest, my husband, as you all know, and Sakai's father and the co-founder of Nyasa Institute. Um, and before we, before I get more into that introduction, I just want to say thank you. Um, I got to connect with about five or six of you last night on the Zoom. I, I knew that I knew that message probably wouldn't get to everyone. And so that was perfect. Thank you for your patience. Um, those of you who were not on Zoom last night for me to be able to uh, explain what the invitation, basically what we're doing now this week, I think just, um, just to let you know, we are in our hotel room and we have um, Sakai is in the room as well. and. He's working very hard to be quiet, uh, and he's being very patient, and um, yeah, just never know what's going to happen with that. Anyway, okay, week 20, spiral four, the element of fire and the kosha of mano maya, which, um, which you all have your guides now. Um, but just to remind us what this, what the Manamaya Kosha and the fire invites is action, right? It's um, time to shine. Manamaya Kosha is your expression body, um, your personality. So it's, this is, this is the time you've been cultivating seeds and many of you have already been expressing your light um, and celebrating the blossoming and now it's just time to turn the dial up a little bit and yeah up level and feel the heat find um feel into that action that next action that that most excites you and most scares you both um and this is the container that is going to support you in leaping and taking that leap off of whatever edge you feel most inspired to take that leap off of. I think that's part of what we're going to talk about because sometimes when we get to that edge, I mean, we've all experienced fear in one, say, once, one way, shape, or form, and we've all been able to move through fear. I'm sure you can think of countless, reason, counts of thing, countless things that have happened to you where you were scared of doing something and you just did it because you're like, ah, F it. I'm gonna do it, okay? So we're not gonna be talking about that fear because you already got the that level of fear handled. We're talking about the fear which just makes you freeze, like, oh my God, I don't know if I wanna do this or that thing because I'm so scared of doing it. That's what we're gonna talk about here, how to, to break through that. And I'm gonna share sort of a process, I'm gonna kind of talk through it, but it goes quicker than me talking through it of what I go through quickly to go through fear. Yeah. And I'm so excited. I really, I, I love this man. Um, for, better. <laughs> for so many reasons. I, one of your assignments was to watch the film about his accident um, and about his survival and about uh, infinite stumbling. And so hopefully you've watched that by now. And if you have, I have no doubt that it inspired you. And so you know kind of the story. Um, it's not as much about the accident as it is about um, overcoming one challenge after another to make his dream at that time come true. Um, and yes, so he is 
um, there's one of one of the t one of the tools and sayings that um, we'll we'll bring into this is everyone is a white belt, everyone is a black belt. We all are white belts and black belts in different things. And of all the humans that I know, um, personally and not personally, this man is a black belt when it comes to transforming fear into fuel and confidence. And I have to say gratitude as well. Um, that might be a different subject, but uh, through, through the accident, um, I met Nova uh, just eight months after he crashed into the mountain with his paraglider. And, um, and I have to say before, uh, before there was any romantic um, notion or uh, I didn't even know if we were gonna be dating or anything, before like all that aside, like I, I told him and I tell people all the time, I first fell in love, well, yeah, with his soul. With his soul, I was gonna say his lips. We did have one kiss before that day, that I, before I found out about his accident. When I found out about his accident, I saw that clip of him in the hospital bed. Um, and he'd never shown anyone this clip before. And I'd known him for th three or four days and he's showing me this clip and he, he's just broken boned in a hospital and the light in his eyes and his soul um, that just lit me up that was there was some real real like amazing inspiration in that and he has you know so in that it was sense, the scene in in why I, I speak to the camera and I say I'll be back that's the part yeah. that I showed thanks her. for all your support and oh, I'm on my way back I'm on my way back I'm on my way I'm back, my way yeah. back. And, um, and for sure, he has been that through and through for the last nine years that we've been together, no matter how much things are seemingly falling apart. Um, In fact, next week, he doesn't my accident... Waver. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the accident was September 16th, 2009, so of course next week will be the 10-year anniversary of my accident. Which we didn't plan, so this is all pretty... Um, the timing of all of this is very auspicious, and so... Um, and yeah, and and then I'll, I'll bring in just one gratitude point, and then um, we'll go into we'll go into the fear stuff. But uh, um, but the two go hand in hand as well. The two go hand in hand. Like no matter how scary something is, no matter how much we we do take that action that scares us, and then the worst thing happens. Um, with that gratitude piece, it's like wow, it it can never be that bad because because you always know it can be worse. And he's been the teacher for me in that. And, and also, also for me is, um, as a woman, um, you know, I feel, like, I feel like women in general, we tend to shy off often, at least I did when we met, and I was very shy about getting in front of anybody with my dance, public speaking, um, just... <laughs> even just launching my coaching practice. I was really, really slow to put myself out there. There were so many things I wanted to do and what was holding me back was this, like, eek, like just, I could feel it in my body just from the physical to the psycho-emotional, like I'm not ready or I'm not good enough and what if I, what if I fail and what if I look stupid and all of that and he has been, he has been the one to um, help me and sometimes push lovingly, right? But sometimes we need that um, to, to just, to, to leap, to do it, to do it. And um, so we're here to be that loving push for, for you all. So thank you for being here thank and thank you. you all for being on this journey and saying yes. This is ultimately what you've been saying yes to is to, to take that leap. So. Um, oh, and then for, um, yeah, and for those, um, for this week also inside of the program, um, the invitation, because we didn't actually have our call last night, the invitation is that um, what we were going to have you do inside of the call is basically go around the circle and share uh, first um, what stop, you know, what, what is a fear pattern that you've noticed or that you can think of? in your life from the past or from the present but but something that you feel is alive right now that 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 take that plays into stopping you 
that plays into stopping you from taking steps um, to be the brightest that you can be. Uh, and then we were also going to ask, um, oh, so the invite. So we're gonna we're asking that if you can still share with us that either um, you can leave us a voice message, leave me a voice message on WhatsApp. Um, or you can write it out in email or you can post it in the private Facebook group and um, and so once we gather all of those questions and and um, and perhaps you can just present your scenario your your situation like okay this is my situation right now this is the fear that I'm I, I believe I'm trying to break through um, so addressing to Nova and we can partner in this like so what what, uh, what would you suggest? Like, what would you do in my situation? What tools, what practices? And so we will take the time yeah. to address those. Now, I would say when you share your story, when you write it out, um, in your situation, when you explain what's going on, what's important to us is to know what are, you, what are you trying to accomplish? Like, what do you want? What's stopping you from, from, from getting that? That's super important to figure out like what you're trying to accomplish. And what does it mean to you to accomplish it? Like, why is that important for you to accomplish it? Because when the why is big enough, the, the how, how is, is easy, easy, seemingly easy. <laughs> and that's important. So yeah. um, as we start to talk about these one. fear things, yeah, spiral one. As you start, start to talk about these fear things, when that why is big enough, um, the how Maybe it's not easy. So I guess what we're trying to figure out, what we're going to talk about is that how part. Because we all know what we want. We probably know why it's important. But it's that how do I get there? And sometimes the how involves being afraid to do that how to get the why that you want. And that's what we're going to focus on in this talk. Yeah. So thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you for having me. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, and with that, uh, we've introduced our luminary. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we wanted to start off, um, and we'll do a second video to address all the questions, by the way, but this yeah. is, we wanted to give you at least this context. This is what we're going to talk about anyway if we had that call last night. Yeah. And so the first thing is let's, let's talk about fear in a general sense. Let's, for, for the purpose of this conversation, we'd like to define what kind of fear. Yeah. So there are basically two, two fears. There is the physical fear, like you're afraid um, you know, someone's gonna shoot you That's because you might die and that's gonna hurt. That's a legitimate fear. And there's also what we, may, we might call the physio-emotional fear. Or the psycho-emotional. Or the, thank you, psycho-emotional fear. Right, so the first would be like purely physical. Like yeah. there's an eminent physical threat yeah. in the, and it's a very real yeah. threat and it's a life or death. Exactly. Situation. And we, you know, we're not going to talk about that because normally in terms of self-preservation, you're probably going to know what to do. But in that process of knowing what to do, if you're facing a life or death situation where you're physically can get harmed, you're going to go through the same process similarly to what we're going to go through. I'm just going to expand it out so we can get not too much in the weeds, but a little bit in the weeds. Because uh, pretty soon, once you start practicing this process, that I'm going to share with you, then it becomes quicker as you exercise this sort of muscle all the time, okay? Yeah. So fear, I'm sure most of you have uh, know what fear stands for. Fear stands for false entities appearing real, <laughs> okay? I'm pretty sure you've heard of that acronym, but it's true. Because and this is the second. This is the psycho-emotional. This is the psycho-emotional one. Kind so of fear. The psycho-emotional um, fear. You know, when we think about, you know, there's two major things that most people are afraid of. It's public speaking and, and death, even though public speaking, I think, actually comes even higher than death. Okay. Yeah. So we'll kind of use as an example, um, as we start to go through these steps, I'll circle back to the public speaking part. Of course, you may have different fears, but these steps um, are the same. So. Yeah. And I also think um, from a neurophysiological standpoint it's important to be aware that the brain your brain does not know the difference between what's real and what's imagined right so so if it's a psycho emotion like the fear of public speaking 
still gets processed in the body yeah. through the fight or flight or freeze system yeah. um, the same as if someone is holding a gun to your head and so it, what's really key here is the only difference is the perception right so yeah. it's all about perception and since and since what Ginger just spoke about there is a physical reaction to that fear part of what we're going to talk about which we're going to get into soon is how do you calm that physical reaction down so you could start to see what you're trying to face somewhat rationally if you if, if we can call it that um, so let's go through that now. Um, so using the example of public speaking, okay, if that's a fear for you, just sit in the fact that you're going to do a speech tomorrow. Okay, what comes up? Probably the heart starts to speed up and you're like maybe some sweats and things like this. So of course, like again, this is something you already know when you start to get really excited about something, what do you do to calm down normally? You take some deep breaths, right? And there was something that I was taught, um, it's called the 15 second breath. This is something that I use when I, my most fearful times is when I try and do a new aerobatic trick. Okay, that's kind of what comes up to me. Most things don't, I'm not afraid of. And the only reason why is because not, I'm, not because I'm some fearless savant, it's because I'm, I just go through this process that I'm just gonna, I'm gonna share with you right now, all right? So the 15 second breath is this. It's a slow inhale for about seven seconds, okay? In through the nose for seven seconds, and you hold it for three seconds, and you exhale for five. That's just the practice that I like to do. And what that does for me it starts to calm me down. Now, whatever breathing you want to do, of course, the deeper and slower, the better. That's the whole point. Yeah. The deeper and slower, uh, the better. And you I can like use the heart mouth breath sure. as well yep. that we yep. that we did worked on the other week. Yep. But slow, slow and yeah. conscious awareness. Yeah. And the reason why we do this, the breathing to slow our systems down, because it's hard when you're that uh when you're sort of in fight or flight because you literally are in fight or flight your body goes offline your 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 thinking your rational brain goes offline so it's hard to to process what's going on so you must sort of relax as best you can the the physiology so now once you start to get relaxed now you get more clarity okay so breath is number one number two is to actually just name it and tame it just say Okay, freaking public speaking scares the shit out of me. And when you name it and tame it, you become present to it. Even, you can even do this as a visualization. Close your eyes and imagine what that fear looks like. Just imagine it floating in your head and then start to throw that in front of you. Like you're watching, uh, you're at a, a stage show and you're watching this fear just kind of hop around. And by coming present to it, you start to realize that, wow, is that a real thing or am I just imagining this? And then, Ginger, you had something about that, that yeah, phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what Nova just mentioned about going offline. So that is like a literal thing that happens with the brain, um, with the neocortex, the processing part of your brain. Um, literally goes off you cannot ration mm -hmm. the the logic goes away and um and if and there's these amazing studies now um been out for a long time actually mri um with the with mri functioning studies where they look at live um like in like current um what's happening in the brain during uh certain behaviors and what they did is they actually had people uh who are in fear and they would either show photographs or something like that that would trigger a certain fear or even anger or just intense negative emotion um, and they would have half of the subjects actually speak it like give voice to their fear or their anger or whatever it was um, and the other half would not and what they saw in the brains is for all of them when that when that intense fear comes up it's like all the blood 
and all the activity in the brain just rushes into the um, fight or flight part of your brain, which is mostly your amygdala, okay? I'm, you've probably heard of the amygdala before. There's other parts too, but that's kind of the 911 of the brain. And then, but for the people who actually verbalize, like, I feel scared or I feel angry, you could see an immediate drop in activity from the amygdala uh, like a like a just like a dissolution a deactivation of all that activity and um, so that then now there was prana and energy um, so that the the processing part of your brain can go back online and and think more clearly about the situation right so before you start to sort of rationalize what your fear is it's very important to get yourself back online so however depending how big the fear is of course your breathing may take longer, but you cannot get to the next step until you start to get yourself a bit online. So again, this is relative to the fear that you're about to, to, to move through. If it's taking you a while to breathe through it, then just takes you a while to breathe through it because that's what you need at that time. It takes me a long yeah. time to breathe through things. <laughs> and unless, unless you can get yourself back online, you can't rationalize anything to what Jinju said. So let's say that you do the breathing and you're like, okay, I, I feel a little better now. I'm still scared shitless, but I, I, you know, I, I can process through this. All right, now next step is to, to really look at, okay, what am I really afraid of? Okay, yeah. what am I really afraid of? Oh, just gonna add one more thing to that. Name it, tame it, and move it. Yeah move it use the flow practices to 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 move and shift yeah. the yeah so anyway but yeah. yep since we're in this flow program <laughs> yeah. yeah so now that you're back online now we can rationalize a little bit what what now the questions start to ask yourself now you're starting to actually question this fear which is great what are you what am i really afraid of the, the public speaking example what am I really afraid of? And how I like to break this down is, what is the worst thing that can happen if I do this public speaking engagement? Using that example, it could be, I totally stutter and I forget what I'm gonna speak about, I get nervous and I freeze. And people start to look at me and go, what the F is she doing up there? Or what is he doing up there? He, he doesn't belong, or all these sort of things, mm -hmm. okay? Could that happen? Yeah, I guess it could. And if it does happen, if it could happen, what is the very worst thing that could happen? Okay, whatever that is. Now I had that this yeah. summer with the speakeasy and at Wanderlust. Yeah. My biggest fear was was that I would freeze actually and yeah. and just go blank and not have anything flow through me and be laughed off of the stage yeah yeah and that and I guess that could happen <laughs> but oh well you know that happens sometimes and you know what when you start to ask yourself this question especially about public speaking here's another good question have others gone through this before or am I the very first person to ever experience this fear and when you ask yourself that question it starts to be ridiculous you say like well I'm I'm probably not the first one that's actually done this, right? In terms of public speaking, you probably see people who are very good at this, right? We tend to compare the best of someone else to the worst of ourselves, right? And we're like, holy shit, I, I can't do what that person does. Well, do you think that person was a born public speaker? Probably not. So how did they get better at public speaking? Yeah, most, most of these masters have amazing uh humbling stories yeah. about their how they how they got started they were white belts yeah so relish in the fact that you're a white belt at something and you're a black belt at something else basically what i'm saying is that relish in the fact that you're not perfect <gasps> you're not perfect oh my god you're not perfect you can make mistakes oh so this I'll just bring this in uh, there's because there's so many different kinds of fears and there mm -hmm. and one of the sisters one of the ladies in the program has already um, described a bit of what she's dealing with is speaking up her truth 
to uh, her partner, mm. to friends, to family. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, yeah, there's something about speaking up and, and sharing what's really on her mind and on in her heart is, is really scary for her. And so to go back to that, the thing that you fear, again, ask yourself the question, you know, what is the worst case scenario here? And once you figure out the worst case scenario, of course, there's very, maybe it could be really bad. I don't know. I'm not trying to generalize too much. But all I'm saying is that in most cases, when we're talking about the psycho-emotional mm -hmm. body, so to speak, when it comes to fear, usually the thing that we fear the most really isn't that bad. We've kind of made it worse than it is. And we really should just look at it as is, not worse than it is, right? Yeah. So again, the question is, What's and if you distill, 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 mm -hmm. distill, we mm -hmm. were talking about this in the car yesterday, mm -hmm. it all comes down to usually... Yeah, fear of rejection, fear of acceptance, fear of... Fear of not being accepted. Not, yeah, fear of not being yes. accepted. Fear of not being and, loved. Right, and the, but everyone has gone through that. You understand? You see what I'm saying? So you're not going to be the first to go through this. So relish in the fact that, you know, I'm not the first one to do this. They pro Probably everyone has gone through this. And if we're using public speaking, probably people look at you and go, wow, I wish I could go up there and speak like her. How cool is that to kind of flip the script on your fear? That maybe you're meant to be there because other people are too afraid to do what you're about to do. Yeah. Okay. And, in the, and in then also then in the other example, not public speaking, but speaking your truth, you know, what's the worst that can happen? You lose that person. Yeah. That is scary, yeah? Because especially if somebody close to you, it's probably the people who are most close to you that you're so afraid to speak your truth because they that, that they they, repre they are love in your life, like our loved ones, right? Mm -hmm. And to lose a loved one, and that is that is scary. That might be even scarier than public speaking oh, and yeah, being sure. laughed at by strangers, who cares, but someone you love and that loves you. Yeah. So yeah, so it's uh, yeah, so so that could be very, very scary. But again, you can apply this process. Yeah. So to go back to um, looking at the fear again, the question is, okay, how? What's the worst that can happen? All what's right. What's the worst that can happen? Then the next question is, what's the best that can happen? If I actually did this, what's the best out? What's the best outcome of this? Mm -hmm. All right. So whatever that is, here's the key, the most key question of of these, of like the worst case, best case. What's likely to happen? Because more times than not, what we fear the worst, does it usually happen? It happens, yes, for sure. But does it usually happen? No. Usually something happens in the middle, yeah. right? But I think you had a really good point too when we were talking in the car, is mm -hmm. really sitting with the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Like to really make that make that real for a moment. Yeah. Like imagine yeah. like that that is what happens. And I think your question was, could I live with that? Yes, could I live with that? Is is the worst case acceptable? Again, we're not talking about physical physical fear, physical danger. We're talking about um, psycho emotional fear. So what if the worst thing happened, is it acceptable? Will I survive? And you know what? If you speak your truth to someone and your truth has that person choose to leave mm -hmm. the re your relationship with them that says something really big yeah it says something really really big but yeah i get it i've been there yep so when you're sitting in this so th those are really the key steps that i go through and then once I make that determination, okay, what's the worst case scenario? What's the best case scenario? Okay. Mm. Then what's likely to happen? Then I'm going to ask myself, okay, if I were to look back at the situation five to ten years from now, how would I feel if I didn't do this thing? Yeah. And you sit with that. And then you look at, wow, what happens if I did this thing and it actually happened the way I had hoped? What would my life look like? Would I be happy about that? Okay. Yeah. so. And, and there's this sort of, there's a sort of uh, statement that I love to say is the pain of discipline or the pain of working through your fear is far outweighed by the pain of regret. Yeah. yeah. 
And you know what? Actually, it's, I'm remembering that we went through this process um, two years ago when things were kind of falling apart, our reality as we knew it. Mm-hmm. And then we had the idea of taking a huge leap and leaving everything we know to live in a foreign country. Yeah. And totally. I remember that the specifically, like, what's the worst that could happen? And that was a powerful place to be. And we looked at that. The worst that could happen for us is that we run completely out of money, that we don't, that our, that our businesses don't take off at all. And we have to come back and move in with Nova's mom. That was going to be the worst that could happen. And you know what? I thought, well, okay, no one's going to die because of this, right? Yeah. So what do we really have to to lose and then and then like you said like what's what's the best that could happen and then yeah yeah so, uh, so th- those are the um, so hopefully that makes sense in terms of what the process is so now that you've defined worst case what's likely to happen in best case at least now you can look at it and say okay what how do I make this happen and as a side note um, if there's still some fear there's this little construct that I want to give to you as we start to wrap this up just a little bit is there's if you kind of look at sort of columns you'll have knowledge confidence and fear oh this is a good one too yeah so fear will always go up when knowledge is down because when knowledge is down you'll be less confident about that And when you're less confident, guess what? You get afraid. You can apply what I just explained to you to every single situation where you're afraid to do something. If you're fearful of something, check your knowledge of that thing, okay? And maybe what you need to do is maybe you need to get yourself more knowledgeable. Because if your knowledge goes up, guess what? Your confidence goes up and fear goes down. And then I think on the more feminine side, this is where it becomes very important for all humans to to commit to practices that exercise and build the intuition muscle. Because yeah. a lot of situations, it's hard to know. It's hard to build knowledge. Mm-hmm. It's it's almost like rolling the dice. And and that's where that inner guidance system is, is going to really help. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, th- I, I had studied, Bra- I still studied Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and there's this guy, uh, his name is uh, Professor uh, Pedro Sauer. And we're Brazilians, they have very deep accents. And he used to say this to us. He used to say, and this was for situations when you're like, because I, I do Jiu Jitsu, which is like ground fighting, so I know how to handle myself if that were to ever happen. And there is a lot of uncomfortable situations to be in and we're, when we're learning to be comfortable. And he used to say, hey guys, to be conf, because he couldn't say comfortable. Brazilians can't say comfortable. He used to say, to be conf, you have to be unconf. <laughs> so in order to be comfortable, you have to be uncomfortable. And the thing is, everyone goes through this. So you have to do that. So again, just relish in your humanity. All right. Um, okay. So as we start to wrap up, let me just go through again the high level steps that I go through. And of course, as I practice this muscle, it's gotten quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. But again, just to kind of break it down, number one is to breathe. Once you recognize what that fear is, and we're not talking about physical, we're talking about psycho-emotional fear, is to do that breathing. If you wanted to do the, um, what was that breath you called it? Heart mouth breath. Heart mouth breath or, or the 15 second breath or whatever sort of deep breathing. The whole point is to get yourself back online because yeah. there's a lot of like, a lot going on. You're like, whoosh, yeah. short breath. Yep. Yeah. And to get yourself back online. And, the, and, and also uh, the science part of that is that our breath signals to the brain and the body um, these different states. And so when we focus on the exhalation, we make it very slow. That actually activates your parasympathetic system, the mm-hmm. rest and the digest rest system. Slow breath. But when, we, when our breathing is short and the inhale especially quick inhale, activates your sympathetic system. It activates that fight or flight. So yeah. consciously, that, that's how you can communicate with your brain. 
in that sense. So step two is just naming it and taming it and moving it. And move it. You've got to move it, move it. Yes. So one of the things, if, uh, if you want, close your eyes, envision what that fear is. Um, you know, imagine that it's uh, your fear is um, wanting to tell your partner that you want to uh, leave them. Mm. Is to, again, it all comes to fear of rejection, fear of acceptance or non acceptance, fear of uh, failure. Um, again, so mm. once you sit with that, imagine it kind of dancing around, almost kind of make fun of it. Like, characterize it oh this fear is just hopping around kind of laughing at me so once you start to to look at that like that you can go okay well that's just a little thing right you kind of flip the fear on its script to make it seem not so big but very small you know make it small and you're like wow and i like that too as i'm actually doing the exercise as he's talking about it I'm, i'm seeing it on the stage and what i love about that is then i see it as for the story that it is, yeah. right? And so that's another part of Monomaya Kosha and the fire is to transform, rewrite the stories, the perception. Yeah. By this time, you're now probably online, you probably have calmed down. You've kind of made fun of your fear in the sense. Now it's just to ask your question, to, to rationally look at this fear and ask yourself, okay, what's the worst case? What's the worst thing that can happen? If I, if I go through with this, what I'm about to do? What's the very worst thing that's going to happen? And then you ask yourself, is it acceptable? Will I survive? Most likely you will. Then the next question is, what's the best thing that can happen if I went through this fear? All right, and then you could kind of project out 10 years. How would I feel if I look back at this point and I didn't do it? Ooh, and how would I, f- yeah, if I didn't do it? Yeah, how would I feel would regret? I feel? That's, that's big, that's really big. And if you would feel regret not doing it, just remember the pain of regret far outweighs the pain of facing that fear. Okay? Yeah. Um, And then, of course, the the thing, next thing to ask, the third thing to ask after um, what's the worst thing that can happen, what's the best thing that can happen, and then the the third one is what's likely to happen? Because that's probably what's going to happen. Right? You want the best. Yeah, it's probably not going to be worse or best. Yeah. Probably probably in the middle somewhere. Okay? And as you start to go through this, you start to relish in the fact that you're human. You're not the first one to ever do, likely, what you're about to do, right? Yes, we all make mistakes. We're all perfectly imperfect, imperfectly perfect. Yeah. Um, And so um, to kind of put a bow at the end of this, there's just two things. One I'm going to add, and one thing I mentioned earlier was... I want to add one thing to Yeah. Uh, Remember that construct of... When knowledge goes down, confidence goes down, fear goes up. So a very simple way to bring fear down is to bring knowledge up. Confidence goes up and fear goes down. Okay? Yep. So this knowledge bit, um, you know, sometimes I think, I feel like when I hear the word knowledge, I think of like going to do some research like Google or go to a book or go to experts or something like that. But again, the intuition thing, yeah. sometimes knowledge actually is getting clearer mm-hmm. about knowing what you want. And here's an example of that. Um, I just thought of another example uh, when, when Nova and I had just met. Um, I realized I was in love with him because I had a vision. Uh, four days after we met, I was sitting in the airport and I literally saw myself in the future holding a baby and pointing up in the sky and saying to the baby, look, there's Dada, there's Dada. And then I had another flash vision of us exchanging vows at Muscle Rock where he flies. And I, and then it just, it was like, the universe was like, here's, here's, here's your future if you want it. And then it was gone. And um, it was really freaky and intense. And I get back to Denver, um, we were in San Francisco and he's asking, so, how do you really feel about me? And I... This is what, three days after we met? And I, I, I thought, well, I, I don't know how to tell him the truth because if I tell him what I just experienced, oh my gosh, worst thing that can happen. 
right? This is, I had to think about that. The worst thing that could happen, and I thought the likely thing that would happen is that he's going to think I'm nuts. He's going to think I'm crazy, and, he, and there's not going to be a future at all. So maybe I should just hold back on speaking my truth, right? What's the best case that happened? And so... Um, well, the best case is that you tell me, and I say something like, wow, I kind of saw the same thing. I don't know. I mean, did that happen? <laughs> Which is actually, I finally decided, it took me three, I, it, I sat at the computer for two hours writing what I felt and what I saw, and then it took me an hour to hit send. And then ultimately, ultimately what I realized is, you know what? If this vision scares him or it doesn't feel right for him, then that's the answer. That, that, that maybe we're not meant to be together despite the vision. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, but if I tell him this, and he's not afraid, and he doesn't walk away, <gasps> wow, like what kind of a feeling would that be? And she told me, and I read it, and I'll never forget, I was in my cubicle, um, one of my tech jobs, and I remember reading it, and slouching down on my chair, and going, wow. And clearly I wasn't afraid. Yeah. And so life is short. That's the other thing I thought about. Yeah. Like I was just, you know, it, this happens so much, especially in love relationships and in career stuff where, where we take, we hold things back for a long time, you know, a long, long time. And life is so, so short. And we often hold things back in fear of a breakup or something like that. But it's just holding back the inevitable. And here's the thing, too. As we, you know, how I talked about, um, you know, looking at your fear and thinking, you know, what's the worst case? What's the best case? I'm sure, and I know I have can look at this, there were probably points in, in your life, in your past, where you chose to go a different way because you were scared. And maybe your life would have been different. Maybe it would have been better. Who knows? But I'm sure there are points where you're like, shit, you know, maybe I should have, damn, I regret not saying something before. And if I had just said something, maybe things would be different. So you don't want to have too many of those, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You don't want to have too many of those because now your life is going to be full of regrets. And wow, if any wise person would tell you, you don't want to have too many regrets in your life because life is so, so short. Yeah, and there is nothing so, there is nothing that could be shared with another human being that cannot be shared with love. Yeah. So no matter how much you think it's going to land in a way that, that hurts or we can always deliver from a place, and that's how all communication, really, in our highest, in our highest place, you know, that's that's what we all aspire for, right? And it is possible. And and when truth is delivered with love, like, it, you can't really go wrong with that. Wayne Dyer talks about a lot of that as well. Yeah. Um, one one little trick, I'll just tell you. So as you start to sort of practice this, I mean, this this these sort of steps are going to get shorter and shorter and shorter. To the point where, if it's one of those uh, f- uh, psycho-emotional fears, the, th- the thing that I do now is when, when I'm afraid to do something, I just go to quickly, are there about a thousand people or a million people who probably wish that they're going to do what I'm going to do? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do this then. Right? That's what I do now. When it's like, oh, I have to give this talk or whatever, I automatically think, there's probably a million people who couldn't do what I'm about to do right now, even though it scares, it scares the shit out of me. <laughs> I'm going to do it. That's kind of what I do now when it comes to the, 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 the psycho-emotional fear. Um, that's what I've distilled it to now because I've just gone through this process thousands of times. And the yes. one thing I just relish in Master. the fact... Master. <laughs> the one thing I relish Utilize in... Utilize this, <laughs> yes. The one thing I relish in is that, again, I'm human. I'm not perfect. And everyone's a black belt. Everyone's a white belt. Which means probably someone is going, oh my God, he's... I want to do what he's doing. 
once I just go through that, I'm like, ah, I'm going to go right through it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. And so, yeah, yeah, we could talk about this for, <laughs> for hours, but um, that's, that's, that's it. That's for really now. it. That's yeah. really it for now mm -hmm. um, until we, um, hopefully that helps. If you were having trouble coming up with, uh, a fear pattern or a question. Hopefully that helps um, as you were listening. I, I imagine some questions came up. So mm -hmm. please utilize this resource while you're in the program. And we look forward to getting your questions, your reflections, um, scenarios, and then we'll make a part two video to address to address all of them. And then for the sister who, who uh, the fear of speaking up um hopefully some of that helped let us know if if uh if you'd like us to further address that and um thank you thank you thank, thank you everyone you. for having me thank you nova sakai fell asleep thank you spirit um <laughs> thank you sakai that this yeah was supported this video <laughs> yeah it's amazing sometimes it really does take miracles <laughs> and support of of the unseen too yeah to do this work um, and to do this life, yeah. So with that, um, aloha, namaste, and we look forward to seeing you next week, and Thank we look you. forward to your questions. Bye. Bye. <laughs>